Nale Kridil. I've been posting some Christmas stuff on my social media lately and people get really riled up if you say Merry Christmas before Christmas Day. Like, the amount of people who were in my DMs going, not yet. We all know that the hyped lead up to Christmas is better than Christmas itself. And today I'm going to explore some Scottish Christmas traditions. So recently I've seen a few things come up that I've thought, are these Scottish Christmas traditions? I've never heard of them. Interestingly, in Scotland, we also go really hard at New Year's. Like, it's a really big party. And through researching Christmas traditions, I realised why we celebrate New Year's so intensely. Back in the day, me and you, baby, we used to have fun. The Church of Scotland frowned upon anything that was linked to Roman Catholicism. So in 1640, the Scottish Parliament passed a law that banned any Yule celebrations. It wasn't until 1958 that Christmas Day became a public holiday in Scotland. 1958. My grandparents were born in 1941 and 1942, and to think that they were alive at a time when Christmas wasn't a public holiday and celebration of Christmas was kind of frowned upon. It's just weird. Wait, did boomers bring Christmas to Scotland? No, they'd be kids at that point. It was the silent generation. Yay, Christmas. So, I hadn't heard of this tradition until this year. Burning twigs from the ribbon tree is said to get rid of any jealousy or bad feelings amongst friends. Now, I didn't give myself enough time to buy rowan twigs for this video, but I looked up the rowan tree online and I saw the berries and I thought, oh, that tree is everywhere in Scotland. So I set out around town to find a rowan tree, but of course, they don't have berries on them this time of year. I did manage to find a tree that had like shriveled berries on it and I thought, I think this is a ribbon. And it looked like the right shape of leaves. You know, I compared it to the picture from the website and although they were much darker in color, they were the right shape. So I really hope these are ribbon twigs. They have thorns. Does a ribbon have thorns? I think the idea is that you put them in your fireplace and they would burn with your coal or your other wood. But I live in a flat and I don't have a fireplace. This is my mini fire. I'm fairly certain that the fire alarm in this room doesn't work. I have cooked a lot of food and accidentally set off the fire alarm in the hallway and this one doesn't make any noise. So I think this one doesn't work. We should be free to burn. I should probably say don't try this at home. And if I Oh no, the fire's gone out. I thought the whole gist of fire was that if you like held the thing down, then it would keep the flame going. Okay, better flame this time. Put it into the, oh no, 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 no. We need the other twigs to catch. Well, this is annoying, although it smells nice. I love the smell of smoke. Okay, so this is me burning ribbon in my living room to ward off any jealousy or bad feelings between me and my friends. I hope all of my friends appreciate me doing this in order for us to all have the best possible end of the year. It smells really good man. This is why people have real fires. I mean also for heat but I just love the smell of smoke. This tradition is around the idea that Christmas Eve is a good time for divination. It's not Christmas Eve today, it is the 11th of December, so I am a good two weeks early. Oh my god, Christmas is in two weeks. I need to buy presents. Anyway, in this tradition, every unmarried person cracks an egg into a glass and the shape that the egg white makes is apparently the shape of the occupation of your future spouse. I really don't know how this works because egg whites are transparent until you like fry them, right? This is gonna be a messy one. <laughs> how do you do this with one hand? Uh-huh. 
Yeah, remember how I was like, how does this work? Egg whites are transparent until you fry them. That, that's exactly what's happened. It, it's just an egg in a glass. There is no shape. And stuff. Stop it! Tiger! I'm gonna throw eggshell at you. No, because then you'll lick it and you'll get salmonella. Oh my god, this video. I really don't know what to interpret from that. Maybe I don't have a future spouse. Maybe that's what the egg is telling me. It then says, the eggs were mixed with milk and oatmeal and baked as a cake. If the cake should break whilst it was baking, it was a sign of bad luck. I'm not going to make a cake with milk and oatmeal because that sounds bland. I'm going to make like a proper cake. It actually ties in very well with the next tradition. So this tradition is where you bake unleavened Yule bread for each member of your family and friends? Nope, just family. Whoever finds a trinket in their loaf will be blessed with good luck in the new year. Tiger, come on man. I love this idea, but I don't know what unleavened Yule loaf is. I don't know what unleavened means. I don't really know what Yule loaf is. I know what a loaf is. I'm a member of Mensa. So according to Google, unleavened means made without yeast. And a yule loaf is in fact a bread and it looks amazing. It's made with caraway seeds, which in folklore prevents something from being stolen or from straying away. So for this reason, something baked using caraway seeds was often given to a love interest or left under the bed of a newborn baby. I love this idea, but I've never baked bread before. Last Christmas I baked gingerbread, but that's not a bread, it's a biscuit. With bread, I really don't know where to start. At least you don't need yeast, but I still don't feel like I would have the skills to pull this off. And I'm already going to bake a cake with my egg, so I'm just going to do that instead. I feel like I kind of need to warn all my friends and family, like, don't bite into the cake too hard. There might be a trinket in there. I don't know what people would put in. I thought about maybe using a button, but then again, I was like really scared that like putting the button inside the cake mixture and letting it bake would basically mean that that cake was poisoned with plastic. What if someone bites into the cake and then they like shatter a tooth? So I've come up with an alternative idea. I'm going to scoop out a little bit of one of the cakes and put a chocolate truffle in the middle of it so you won't be able to tell from the outside which one it is but when you bite into it you'll be pleasantly surprised and that is the one that will bring luck to the cake eater. <laughs> that it's baked but I just want to show that there is no crack I don't think there's creasing but there's no crack <laughs> I love the absurdity and the mystery of the cupcakes and this cake that I made from the egg that I smashed to discover my future spouse's occupation. It kind of, it, you know, I, it was an interesting choice to go for black icing and then I thought, oh, I'll make it look really cute with a red rose which got a little bit squished and now it kind of looks like I've died. Like it looks like a funeral cake, which I'm okay with. <laughs> Uh, you know, when I finally do die, here's the inspiration for my own funeral. So, yeah, I've got a lot of cake now.
Thank you for watching today. I hope you enjoyed these unusual Scottish Christmas traditions. If you know someone who'd love to give these traditions a try, then please share the video with them. Maybe they'll make some cakes and you'll get the lucky one. In fact, if you could encourage people to make me some cakes and like make sure I get the lucky one, like I don't care if it's rigged, I would just really like some good luck. Or however you want to share it is fine. See you next time.